Hello and welcome to the Esther James channel. I'm Mr. James and I love celebrating the holidays. Since it's winter time, I wanted to share with you this awesome step-by-step -step tutorial that we can create together in just one hour. So grab your paintbrushes and join me in what I like to call the holiday happy hour. Let's go. All right, so let's just go over the supplies that we're gonna need to make this thing happen. First, you're gonna need a canvas. It doesn't really matter which size you have. Uh, as long as you have a canvas, you can paint along with me. Just make sure you have one, canvas of any size. Uh, next thing you want is a paper plate or some kind of palette so you can put all of your paints on top of it. Uh, paper plates are the most convenient for me, but I also like to use the little plastic ones. Those are my favorite because they usually come with lids and we can keep our paint nice and wet in case we have to get up from our painting for any reason. Uh, you won't need a lot of paint brushes, just like with what most of my paintings are. You can accomplish most of this with just the three. As long as you have one big flat one, we call it a one inch brush, you're gonna be in good shape. You should have another one that looks just like it, but just a tiny version of it. And of course a detail brush, just something that's round, small enough for you to get in there and add some little details like snowflakes and stuff to the scarf. Also, this is very important, is a piece of chalk. You don't necessarily need this, but this really does help a lot. So that way you can play with your painting a lot and go back and forth with it uh, without having anything permanent being on there. We're gonna talk more about that later. Uh, I do have a washcloth you could use, paper towels, uh, really anything just to wipe your brushes off once you use your water. <laughs> and last but not least, the paints that we need to go over. Uh, you could do this with, uh, I think, uh, seven colors roughly. All right, I have a black and white. I have an assortment of paints as well from different companies, different places. You don't need anything fancy for this painting. We're not doing something super advanced that's uh, gonna take you a lot of money. So beginner paintings, anything you can find will work. Black and white's a given. You should definitely have black and white, but the colors we're gonna jump into with that, it would be a purple. You will also need some form of green, an orange, a red, and a yellow. That's it, that's all you're gonna need to get into this painting and start creating something beautiful that you would love to hang up at home for yourself. Let's jump into it. The first step that we wanna do is make sure we have a thin layer of water covering our entire canvas. Uh, why we do this is so that the paint spreads easy for us and we get a nice uh, texture and lay, uh, layer that lays down smooth and even. And while this is happening, while we're putting our water, I want to tell you about this happy little green and red festive bar at the bottom of your screen. This is our timer that will tell us how much more time we have until the next section or the next uh, item on our painting that we're going to be working on. Uh, this is really convenient because we are trying to hit this one hour mark and get this painting done in an hour. But the benefit for you viewers here is that well, you're watching a video, so you can pause or fast forward at any point during this whole thing. Uh, if you finish a section before I'm done, awesome. You can see that green bar there. You go ahead and just click over to the next chapter. Or if I'm going a little too fast for you, you can always pause it and then resume when you're ready. So that being said, our little bar is about run out. So let's get into this painting. You should have that thin, layer of, of water on there already. It should be moist. You don't want too much on there. Uh, you just want it to help you spread this paint around. Now I'm going to work from for the items or the things that are farthest away to the closest. So the sky is easily the farthest thing away in this painting and it is going to be nighttime. So we want it to be black. I put down these little X's just because it's a nice way to kind of spread the paint out and not have it all in one clump or one area and try to spread it out over the entirety or the surface of the canvas. So what I did is just space out my black there and then I'm going to use uh, long horizontal brush strokes or I'm going to use the broad side of this large paintbrush here. And we're going to just spread this black around. I'm gonna stick with just the top half. The bottom half is gonna be our snow. We don't need 
black snow necessarily. We will merge some of it down there and I'll explain why in just a minute. But for right now, we're just getting all this black up on at least to the top half of our painting. Um, some people ask me when I teach classes like this, uh, what is there a right or wrong way to spread this paint? No, not necessarily. Uh, uh, I like to use long horizontal strokes. Uh, I feel like that it spreads it out the most even. Some people do do short little jagged strokes, but if that's the case, you're not gonna see a lot of great blending. You're actually gonna see those strokes and it's actually a really cool technique. And if you stick with that, you should do that with the rest of your painting. But for this particular painting, we just wanna get that color down. And uh, the reference I like to use is kind of like sweeping a floor. So as I do this, I'm pretending like I'm sweeping, uh, sweeping up a floor and that helps spread the paint around a lot. And I'm gonna keep doing this till I know for sure that that whole canvas is covered up. You might still see some white shining through. If you do, that's, that's okay. We can always come back and cover some more and I think that'll be the case with mine here. Uh, once it dries, you might not see it. I also do the edges. If you've watched any of the paintings I've done before, or you've taken any of my classes, you know that I can't have these edges not painted. There is no right or wrong with it. Just make sure that whatever you do, you're happy with it. You'll notice here I did take some of the black down into the bottom of the painting. Uh, I did that on purpose. Once this paint starts kind of drying up or thinning out, I'll take this extra, extra paint on the brush and just bring it into the bottom. We are gonna mix um, some of this black and maybe some purple too into this to make snow. As we all know, snow is white, but we also need to capture depth and make this look somewhat realistic. I don't know if I say realistic, but we wanna give it some value and some tone and, and depth. So the snow is gonna start out kind of a gray and purple, and then we will add white highlights to it later. It's gonna look really cool once you see what I mean. So we want the bottom half of our painting to just have a little bit of gray in it. We don't want to paint the bottom black. And again, I'm just, once my paintbrush starts running out of paint, then I take some of that excess paint that's left over and bring it down to the bottom. So your top half should definitely be black. Your bottom half should be little spots of gray everywhere. And now we'll take our purple. You might see, uh, I ran out of water here a little bit towards the bottom, it dried up. And if you're running out of water, you're gonna see that that paint doesn't spread very well. So a simple trick to fix that is just dip your paintbrush in the water that you have and spread some more water. Again, the water is just really indicative or really helpful, if you will, to spread this paint around. And so with the image that we're looking for right now is just to have a dark night sky all black up top. And then down at the bottom, we should have this nice grayish purple tonality this will be our snow again we will add white to it later but we got to give it some depth here and depending on the purple that you have some of you might notice purple with a lot of these pink companies it's not a really strong color uh, it's usually very thin and any other color you work with work within it at least if you're at level one paints um, it'll take over this actually works in our benefit though because we don't want this to be entirely purple we just kind of want to see our, our the beginning signs of our field of snow and now I'm gonna add a little bit of white to it and this will help make it clear that this is a snow field <laughs> but now that we have this darker shade in here these colors should be mixing, the white and the, the purple and the black. All of this should be mixing at the bottom here to create the, the first layer of our snow field. There is no right or wrong with how much paint you use. You do want to make sure though not to use too much black because black will overtake all of this purple and all of this white. But as they mix together, you're gonna see now we have an interesting thing happening. We have Black, you can, if you look at it closely, you'll see black, you'll see purple, you'll see white. This is what's creating our depth. This will make it so it doesn't look so flat. And I gotta get the edges, give me a second. Let me get these edges.
There we go. So this is a nice looking snow field. The beginning of it. We will put some highlights here later. So don't, don't try so hard to make this look like it's absolute white. That won't work. So now when you do take the absolute white, we're gonna add some hills. Uh, maybe like the wind was blowing this snow around. If you find that once you add this white that it's still blending in with your background, we don't want that at this point. So you might need to give it a second just to dry. It's okay if it mixes a little, but we do want now some definition. Uh, I'm gonna put some hills in the background here. Why make it boring, right? Let's give it some, some flavor, some zest. And it's still mixing with my paint here a little bit. So I'm going to be very cautious around these hills. Mm, yeah, we're gonna do this. Yeah, we can do it. I'm not gonna let it dry. I'm gonna just take a little extra white and just add some highlights to these hills or just create some new hills. We don't wanna blend at this point. Once I put this white down, I'm gonna leave it there. And you might have a good thick chunk of it that stayed. Use that to your benefit. It almost adds like three dimensional texture to your painting. I'm gonna capture the back of these hills cause let's say there's a moon maybe hiding off in the corner somewhere or there's light coming off of somewhere. Uh, these hills would light up towards the top. So I'm just adding a little bit of a brighter white here. And these could be snow drifts, these could be hills. Uh, the, the goal you want here is just to have a few white lines popping out all on their own. And then you see once we get into this black and purple area, now it looks like a valley. And that's how we get depth using this. So I'm gonna clean off my brush now. Make sure that I don't have any more of that white and stuff. I'm gonna go back and make sure all of the white parts of the canvas are completely covered. I want this background to be just pitch black. I don't wanna see brush strokes. I don't wanna, I just wanna make it black. Where it's just painted black. So this timer, as you see, is running out and we are going to start our next step. At this point, you wanna make sure everything is dry. So if it's not dry, it's a good time to pause the video once you're done with this black background and hit this thing with your hair dryer or a fan or take a paper plate or a piece of paper and fan it. For the next step, you definitely want this to be dry. Everything should be dry before we start this next step. Chalk. We are gonna take our chalk and we are gonna draw our image. So we're gonna start with our snowman. I'm gonna put him a little off to the left. So like the first, third, cause there's gonna be a tree. Just think of it, these are two things that we have with this image. We have a snowman on the left and a tree on the right. And what I'm doing is gonna draw the base of the snowman. Try to make it a perfect circle, but if you don't, it's really okay. Snowmen aren't always perfect circles. And I'm gonna hide him right behind this drift or this, this piece of snow here. That's why you're not seeing the whole thing. But why we use chalk is because if you don't like what you've done, you can just wipe it away. And that's really crucial to why it needs to be dry at this point is A, you need to be able to put the chalk down, but B, if you end up erasing some of this chalk that we don't smear our background at all. So we're just gonna do uh, like you would do any snowman, make a big circle, then a medium circle on top of that, then a small circle. And he has a nose. He has some charcoal. We are gonna cover this up. I'm just doing this so I know that it's kind of looks right proportionally. 
because our next step is we're gonna paint this whole thing white. So we will lose some of these lines that are in his face, but this helps me just draw him out and make sure I got the right things. Uh, let's add a scarf. Mm, yeah, it should be blowing in the wind. So I think once I do this, it, it'll be not just falling down to his side. Maybe this first one here, but the second one, let's make it blow in the wind. So all we're doing is just getting this temporary line out. He's got some arms. Now again, why are we using chalk? Don't be scared to pause the video, erase it if you need to. If you don't like what you see, uh, that's why we use the chalk. You can go back as many times as you need. I did point his carrot nose kind of towards the top just because it looks like he's looking up. And let's talk about the tree real quick. The tree, um, we're gonna do the background first, but we need to make sure that we have the right shape. So I'm just doing kind of some helpful construction lines. You can do a, a line straight up to figure out how tall you want it to be. And then I'm just doing these, these angles that swoop down to the left or to the right, just to kind of give me some perspective of what this tree is supposed to look like. It won't be a perfect triangle. It will have different levels of trees. If you've ever built a fake Christmas tree or even decorated a Christmas tree, you know that it's thick on the bottom, skinny in the top, but it has layers and levels. So that's what we're emulating with these curves. And the snowman's, I, I, I already did it, but the snowman has a little ornament that he's gonna be hanging up too. So we'll do that. Uh, now that this is dry though, I'm gonna take this white paint and I'm going to just put more white in to highlight these snow drifts. Now that our, our construction lines are in and I know where everything's gonna be, now I can make these lines a little bit more white so that now we have more of a snow effect. And I just wanna do simple wavy lines. I don't wanna go too far and cover up all this purple we did because it actually looks really cool. Even though it's purple, we know it's snow now. And the next step is really easy. You can change out brushes if you need to. I'm going to take just a little bit of a white, a little bit of purple. We're gonna fill in this entire snowman with just either, you could use plain white. I do act, like to add in just a little bit of purple just to give it uh, a little bit of depth and texture as we were talking about earlier because we can come back and add more white to this later. But if I do a, a light purple here, we're gonna fill in everything here. So we're gonna fill in everything on the snowman, fill in his head, fill in his body, we're going to fill in the scarf and we are going to cover up anything that we drew in chalk and we're gonna make a nice, big, solid image of, of just purple. So later, <clears throat> if you want, you can take your chalk and redraw everything in. But this is now we have our setup, we know what we're supposed to be painting and we're gonna cover all of this. So I'm gonna stop talking for the time being and let you fill it in, but we are filling in everything we did in chalk, except for the tree. We're just working on the snowman right now. And we're gonna fill in his scarf, his arms, everything. Like I said, don't be scared to change your brush. Uh, I was working with the big brush mostly because it covers a lot of areas as fast as possible, but now we're into a section where it needs to be a smaller brush. So I'm using another brush that's just like it, just way smaller, 
making some more light purple and I'm gonna go through, now I can get these smaller areas a little bit easier. So please work at your own comfort rate and, and pick the brush that fits you the best for what you wanna accomplish. This is like a coloring book at this point. We wanna stay inside the lines and you created the lines so you should know your own ability. Uh, this works really good for the arms as well. Uh, I'm going to use the thin side of this square brush or the flat brush and I'm gonna run it like a line up his, his uh, arms. And this will be really easy. The chalk should just wipe away as you do this as well. So don't be scared to go over the chalk. I am leaving a little bit of lines in between like his neck and scarf just so I can see where that, that part is gonna be. If you didn't, it's okay. You should have been able to see everything. This is just our construction lines. We will get to the details later and that's the fun part. Now as I work on his nose, I'm still gonna use just white and fill that part in. It might look a little different on your painting, how much white or purple you laid down. Some, you might be able to see the nose, maybe not, but I still do it anyway because I know where I want it to be. And again, with these arms, I am just using that thin side of the brush. I'm making sure I get every mark that I did with the, with the, uh, the chalk. So now I don't even have to erase the chalk. It has now been replaced with white paint with a little bit of purple, I guess. So same thing over here. See, I run it long ways and skinny there. I don't use the, the broad side of that brush. I'm turning it so I'm using the thin points and this should make really nice clean lines. Maybe some frillies here at the end of uh, his scarf. fill in the ornament that he's holding. I know I didn't explain that earlier, but go ahead and add, he's dressing the tree, he's putting stuff on it. At least in this picture, that's the way I see it. So there's his hand holding an ornament and he's about to put it on the tree. Okay, so if we zoom in here, you can see that this purple didn't cover up everything. So I'm gonna come back and I'm going to just add some pure white just to add some texture to this and make sure that we have it all covered up. We don't wanna be able to see through this snowman. We wanna make sure that he is covered up. None of that black's coming through. make sure that he is completely covered up. No blacks coming through, no pieces of canvas are coming through. I might see this little line from the hill through his belly, but that's because it was a big thick piece of paint. But we're gonna try to cover it up as best we can. Just take some pure white and, and get this thing covered up. I might leave these left edges just a little bit because the purple is kind of nice, but Let's get that thing covered up. We don't want any black, no black peeking through from the background. I'm gonna grab my small, smaller brush because it's a smaller area. Please don't be scared to use that smaller brush. And we're just gonna fill this in. We wanna make sure we got a pure white thing sticking out here. Cause he's a snowman and this purple will just add depth. So if we don't cover up the purple, that's okay. We wanna just make sure that the black part is covered up. And you can take your time with this. Go as fast as you need to or as slow as you need to. Don't forget we have chapters. You can pause the video and uh, skip it and do things at your own pace. 
But as you can see, I did this. You can almost see that the carrot, where the nose will be, it, the way I use the brush strokes, it, you should be able to see where your, your carrot's supposed to be. Uh, this is also important for the scarf and the carrot and all that, because if this is all white, once we put these nice, rich colors down, those colors are really gonna pop out. So as I do this scarf, I'm only gonna do kind of like the outside edges. I'm gonna leave the middle a little purple there just to give it some depth. And you can do the same. You can just do the edges or... Scarves are funny. They, uh, they have some dimensions to it that aren't always easy to paint. I found that if you just kind of stick to where you believe the edges should be and do a one line through that, you'll be in good shape. The tree will be next. It looks like our snowman has most of this properties covered. We don't have any of the background showing through. So let's talk about this tree uh, next. What I'm gonna do is take black. <clears throat> yes, I know it seems redundant that we have a black background and I'm painting black, but you should be able to at least see some of this, this structure. Um, why am I doing black? Well, because everything has shadows and depth and character. And we, when doing something like this, I always like to start with the darkest color first and then work our way up to the brightest color. So I'm gonna fill in this tree and I'm gonna plant these, these brush strokes as if I, those branches were actually growing out. You'll see that I'm tapping a little bit. Um, I'm gonna go back and forth between making lines and just tapping. Uh, if you wanna make it more exact, you can actually draw each individual branch as you think it would come out and then add those pine needles by doing this tapping technique. So if I fill in like this tree trunk here, that's definitely solid, so there we go, solid. And now it's got branches growing off of that tree trunk and I'm, I'm just tapping those edges just to make it look like it has those branches with the pine needles poking off of them. We are only using black here, we will come back and do other color, but this is just a simple way to capture that depth in the three dimensions of the tree, because you would see some of the background coming through some of these sections. Maybe it's a, a bald spot in the tree, or it wouldn't exactly cover up everything. So that's why I like to do this tapping method. It looks like you can actually see the pine needles. And I'm just following my chalk lines, and there we go. So this black, once it dries in the background, it's gonna look really similar, but at least we know now what we're looking for. We know where the shape is, because the next color we're gonna use is a dark green, or just a regular green if you have it. Uh, we're gonna end up making some different greens, but we're gonna do shades. So we're gonna do a darker green shade first, and we're going to start hitting parts where we think the light or the nighttime moonlight might have hit it. So as I do this, I'm gonna grab this smaller brush and oh, I'm gonna grab this bigger brush. Make sure your brushes are clean. We wanna get this black off of all of our brushes if you have it or white off the brushes. It's a good time to clean your brush. And now I'm gonna take this green. I'm actually mixing a little bit of purple into it just to make it a darker. When I was talking about the shades of green, we want a darker shade of green. So if you take a little bit of that purple and mix it in with your green, we now have a dark shade of green. And I'm gonna get my general shape now, just like what we did with our chalk lines. I'm gonna go over those edges. And I'm gonna initially stick to just the edges. We don't wanna make full lines where they're connecting. These green spots should be kind of hovering over each other. They shouldn't necessarily connect. We're not making a zigzag line going all the way down. We are making a zigzag shape. But when we're, like I was talking about with the levels, we're gonna go over each level of this tree and add just some of this dark green on each level of this tree. There'll be some in the center too here. There's more than just the left side and the right side. There's the side that's coming towards us as well. And that'll be our kind of down the center. I hope that made sense. I'll explain it one more time. Uh, in the three dimensions, 
This tree has more than just a left side and a right side. It has a bunch of sides. Some branches are coming straight at us. Some of them are going to the left. Some of them go to the right. Some of them are going away from us. So what we're gonna do is just kind of emulate or capture that idea by sticking with these levels. And as we do these lines together, we'll go down the center as well, but it's like the center has its own column of green as well. It's not necessarily all connected. So as you do this, it should look like a, like a skirt or a dress with frills coming off of it. And you can be sloppy with this. Uh, I've done a lot of trees. This one's a little sloppy, but we're sticking with that time limit and it's still gonna look good for being a fast tree. So I'm just adding this green on top of our black. Now we have uh, some shade, some depth, and that's what we're looking for with this. Bam, so now we're not seeing all the hills come back. That black really helps this look three-dimensional. And I feel like there'd be a lot of green color here. We are gonna add some lights to this, so some of these branches would light up. I'm really just trying to capture those pine, that pine needle effect, so I'm doing that tap motion again. And boom, we have a tree. Now I'm gonna add some light green to this next. So we're not gonna use that dark color. We're gonna use, um, probably mix this yellow and green together. There we go. And we will have like a light green to work with. Now this is gonna help us with our highlights. So I'm only going to put this on the tips or the edges of where I feel these pine needles would see. I'm not gonna put it towards the, uh, how do I, how would I say this? We're gonna just do the edges as if just the, the edges light up. I tend to get carried away with this sometimes. So use this, be frugal with this. We're, we're gonna be very tight with how much of this highlight we're going to use. But I feel like the, we're going to put uh, highlights just where the tips of these pine needles would be coming out, where the moonlight would just barely hit the edges of them. So I'm doing this tap motion here again as well highlighting some of these pine needles. So there'd be some of the pine needles coming out at us. Those would be the ones in the center. So I'm kind of keeping the center ones short as if they're coming towards us. And then as I get to the left or the right of the tree, I, I get a little bit more generous with the highlights. Now every part of this that I lay down, I'm using this tapping motion just to kind of create the illusion that there's a lot of these pine needles. If I use just smooth straight lines, it won't come out quite as good. Uh, I did some add some white here. So what I'm doing now is kind of just testing it to see if it's too bright. And it looks pretty good, so I'm gonna keep going around and adding just, just the tips of these edges on each level. And as I go up a level, I'm just doing just the tips and edges with this lighter yellow-green mix. And you can go as crazy with this as you want. I feel it does look better if you're, if you use it sparingly. And I've really gone into this, so I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna own it and I'm gonna add some more. Let's make this a really bright tree. It's really up to you though. So you see these black parts back there? I'm gonna leave them like that. That's what makes it look like it's further away or in the shadows. Now I'm using this white. All right, we're gonna add some Christmas ornaments and lights to this tree. So what I'm doing here with this yellow and white is adding where I think a light would go. And if there's a light sitting there, well, it would light up part of that pine needle or part of that tree. So what I'm doing is adding some yellow. You're gonna have to mix it with either yellow or green, or I'm sorry, white or green, because yellow by itself won't cover up too much. But if you do this, this is where I'm anticipating putting lights. And when lights sit on that, it would light up not only the light, but part of the tree. So it's just a little effect I think that would look kind of cool. Like boom, okay, the, the light has lit up that part of the tree, so it's really bright pine needles. And that's what we're doing. 
and get ready for our next step because we're going to lay down the basic layers for our lights and our ornaments. So make sure your brush is clean. And we're gonna start adding our ornaments. So if you grab some white paint, what I'm doing is twirling the brush on the canvas here to achieve a circle effect. And all I'm doing is just grabbing white. It will mix with the green and stuff a little bit that you have if it's still wet, and that's okay. But as we do this, if you add white, we're laying down a primer layer or a general layer because if we were to come in here and just add red or white to this, you would still see the tree come through. So we don't want that. We need to let this primer layer hit. Same thing that we did with our snowman. So I'm gonna just make a bunch of circles. And as you can see, you can use, use the flat brush and twirl it in your hands, or you could use the detail brush like what I've switched to. And you can just make circles and fill it in. I found that this is a little bit easier just to make my own circles. So I'm gonna put a circle wherever I feel an ornament fits. You should do the same. Put one where it feels good to put an ornament. And as we put this down, we're gonna come back and put color over this later, but because we're doing this white layer first, that will really, really pop. The color will. Uh, if you find that you don't do this white layer and you put the, the red or green or whatever color you end up using for your ornament, it's not going to pop. It's going to get lost in that background. Laying this white down ensures that we will see whatever color we put on top of it. Okay, so this is, remember those green or those yellow spots we put down where I feel a light would be? I'm gonna do a little white dot for each one of those spots as well. And when I do that, that's gonna help us again for the same reason, it'll help us pop that light. So I'm kind of mixing in different spots here where there's gonna be an ornament, but all those yellow spots I put down where I thought there was gonna be a light, I'm gonna put a little white dot there too. Now we gotta put some snow on this bad boy because it is snowing. Why is there snow everywhere but not on a tree? So I'm gonna go over the outsides of these limbs. If you do just the edges, remember those tree, tree branches coming at us have edges too. So we'll put a little bit of white down there in front of us as well. But this is just like some snow is laying on top of this tree. And of course it'd be going down the top of it so we're gonna have some snow. Now I'm doing the same tapping motions, but I'm, I'm being less tappy about it, and more kind of putting uh, just some texture and get these lines as if the snow was laying right here on top of the branch. right here down the center again. I kind of do a U shape when I go down the center because the branch would be coming towards us. In my mind's eye, that's that's the way it would look. Whew, this is a lot of light. This is gonna look really good once we lay some color down. But we gotta get all our foundations in there first. We gotta make this look as if it belongs in this painting. So yeah, let's just keep adding some snow on these edges. 
I am being a little sloppy with it. I'm having fun. I'm just adding stuff where I feel there would be snow. You should do the same. Do not pick yourself apart or beat yourself up and say how terrible it looks. Uh, there's a nice little trick too. If you're not liking how it looks, you can always start over. But uh, another trick that you can do besides that is actually get up and stand away from your painting. Either lean it up against the wall or just make sure that you can see it from about six feet away or more. And you'll notice that your painting will change. The way it looks will change because sometimes we're up just too close. We, we are into the painting too much and we're seeing all these flaws. And then once we step back from it a little bit, uh, we realize those flaws don't matter so much. So again, don't beat yourself up. Just add some, some white snow on here where you feel it's acceptable. The hard part now is just knowing where I put these lights and where I made these ornaments. So we don't wanna cover that up too much, but let's go into the lights. So those little white dots, let's put some, some yellow shimmering light going around it. We're just adding yellow now. I didn't mix it with anything because I do want some of this background to pop through with the lighting effect. So some of this green or some of this black should be able to pop through this yellow effect. And all this is gonna be is our glowing lights. Now you can make it like the rainbow lights or like green, yeah, all the different assorted colors. I'm gonna just stick with yellow for this one just because it's so busy already. I'm just gonna keep it as yellow. And I'm gonna do uh, the ornaments a single color as well just so it doesn't take over. This is a secondary highlight, but I feel like the snowman is the star in this show. So we're gonna focus on the details there. I don't wanna make the tree too busy. Now we're gonna put all those yellow spots we did, I'm gonna put a white dot or a little line in between all those to emulate that it's a, it's a twinkling light. tree looks a little wonky, it looks a little wobbly, but I guess that helps with the reality of it. <laughs> all right, so let's grab some red and all those white circles that we created, we are now gonna cover them with red. This is pretty simple, this is a fun part, it's like a coloring book. We're gonna fill this all in. Now we got some ornaments and you're gonna notice that red really pops now because we put that white down. If you skip that part, you're gonna notice a difference. It's not gonna pop as bright. But there is no right or wrong. It is however you wanna see it done. So I'm gonna just paint these in red and then we'll get ready for our next step. We're gonna detail the red or we're gonna we're gonna add some dimension to this red ornament just to give it some, some look and some flair, but I'll show you that in a moment. All right, so now we have, I'm just gonna do a little white dot or a little curvy line right around the edge of this red. 
just to make it look like lights glowing off of it or the outside, you know, give it that orb shape. So if you do just a little white dot or a little white line just around the edge of that, it'll give your ornament just a little bit of flavor. Make it look like it has some depth to it. And of course we can't forget the one that the snowman is holding either, right? Same thing, we'll put a little white dot and a, a line around it. All right, so let's get into the fun stuff now. We are going to paint this snowman. We aren't gonna start with the color first. We're gonna add some depth and shade to him. So I'm gonna take some purple, mix it with white. We want it to be darker. We're just gonna add his shadows. So what we're gonna do is where the, maybe that second snowball stacked on top there, you would see the bottom edge there. So I'm gonna just kind of highlight that bottom edge like light wasn't getting there with this purple shadow. Purple, this light purple works really well with making shades on snow, I feel. It's not too harsh, we do get some shadow. Uh, you could use black and white and use some gray. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that either, I just feel this purple kind of captures what snow, the shadow uh, on snow would look like. We're gonna do it underneath the scarf here as well. Again, we are gonna cover up some of the, these lines that we did, but if you have some really good prominent lines, you don't have to cover them up, just work around them. What we really want is just to get this bottom left orb snowball shape. <laughs> if, you, if you stick to the bottom and to the left side of each shape that you did, you'll see this shadow. And we're gonna mix some white in here too. Uh, this is gonna be more intermediate, slow, close to advanced. So if you are painting along with me and you were brand new and beginner, just kind of emulate what I'm doing here. And I'm gonna mix these edges just so they're just not so harsh. So just so it doesn't go purple straight into white. We wanna blend these lines just a little bit. And now we have some shadow to our snowman. I'm just going back and forth, just making sure it's blended. Uh, if we have just solid white, to me that's boring. You can definitely see a snowman, but if we can mix these colors a little bit to where the right side is brighter and the left side is a little bit darker, we can actually see the, the, the realistic side or the depth of how this snowman was maybe put together. And obviously the top of his head would be really bright because if there's a moon anywhere, light coming from the sky, it would hit the top of his head, it would hit the top of his nose, and then maybe towards the bottom of his head, it wouldn't be as bright. So I'm gonna leave some of this purple in there towards the center. Make sure the nose is nice and bright. I'm laying down this white, because once we paint this carrot orange, if we didn't have this white layer, just like with our ornaments, his nose is not gonna pop out. So we wanna make sure that white is there before we put this orange down. Now you might have to go back and redraw these lines in with your chalk if you don't remember what it's supposed to look like, and that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. So if you need to, go ahead and pause the video and, and redraw your, your pumpkin pumpkin, excuse me, redraw uh, the, the carrot in the nose there and his eyes and do, we'll do the same thing. You're just going to cover it up once we use these colors, if you need that reference. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to the top of his nose here, again, just to add more, more depth and dynamics to it, just so it looks three-dimensional and it's not just an orange triangle popped out on his face.
And, okay, I'm gonna grab a different brush here. And we're going to, I think, work on his scarf. Let's make his scarf green. So I'm gonna take a normal green, and I'm just going to cover up everything with the scarf. We'll add dimensions and highlights and stuff later. For now, let's just get this green down. I'm just using general green or whatever color you decide you want to use. I like green because it messes with the or it meshes real nice with the purple shades we have in the orange nose. It's all secondary colors. They really pop out to me. So I like green, but make it any color you want. And all we're doing is just filling it in like the coloring book. Like I said, all that white that we laid down should be prepped for us so that once we put this color in, it's there, it's nice, it's vivid, it pops. And even when we did the highlights or the shades, that should kind of pop out here too. It really minimizes the work that we had to do. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of yellow just so it becomes a lighter shade of green. And I'm gonna do that just to blend the colors a little bit. Again, just for more depth. Just so it's not just a plain green old line. But now we have some depth to our colors. I'm gonna do the edge here just like I did earlier with the white. It should still pop out for you if you did that part. And you should be able to just draw right over it. And bam, now we have like a three dimensional looking scarf. I'll take this dark green and go back and just do the, the shadows uh, or add any kind of texture. If you want to try to make this scarf looks like it has a texture or a pattern, you can add that to it as well. It is your choice. It is your painting. Do what you want with it. Okay, I think the scarf looks pretty good for now. Now I'm gonna take some brown. Now there's a trick here. You wanna wet your brush first before you do this and mix some of that water into the brown. But since we laid our white base level, base layer here, this should be really a piece of cake as well. We're just gonna go back with that thin brush. We're gonna do the same technique and style we did. We're just gonna use brown. And boom, now he's got some wooden arms. As every snowman should have, I guess. I'm actually gonna pull this brown into it a little bit more, into his body, so it looks like it's sticking out of his body right here. There we go. So that looks like, bang, we, we stuck it right there. That makes it look a little bit three-dimensional as well. Uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow. I'm trying to put like a highlight on these parts as well. So if I stick to just the top edge or the, the right side of the edge of the, the branch, uh, I'm just trying to add more of that 3D element. Just give it some more depth and, and shape. Shape should be the word I was using, not depth. We're trying to add some shape to this. So that's all I'm doing. Yellow works really well with this for all these colors that we're using as a highlight color. There we go, now we actually have a branch with some shape and form to it. And we are getting pretty close to done. We are just working on details, this is fun. Now, we are gonna put some coals down for his face, but we're not gonna do that quite yet because we gotta make some shadows. So this is a good way to practice as well of what his shape should look like because if you end up not liking it, you can just cover it up with white. But if you take just the light purple and we, and we draw in where we want these coal shapes to be. They'll create shadows on our snowman, just like we have on the left side there. And then once we put these black, there, this black paint on there, it'll look like the coals are realistically sitting in there. It's a cool little trick. So just grab that purple and do all the spots where you feel that you want your coal to be. So his buttons, uh, whatever it is you want to add to it. And I got some extra purple here. I'm just gonna just put that all on the side. Yeah, looks realistic. Oh, he needs some on the bottom of his head as well. There we go. But up to you how much shading or not shading you want to put in there. No right or wrong, as I've been saying. 
So let's put some coals in there. Let's just go grab some straight black. Uh, dip your brush in the water first. This black, it'll help that black come off much easier. And I'm just gonna copy those. I'm gonna leave the little purple on the edge, like I was, I was saying earlier. If you leave just to the left and just to the bottom, it'll look like they're actually sitting in there. With the mouth, that might be a little bit harder. We're just gonna go over all of that so now we know where we want this black to be. I can't stress enough how important it is to do that purple first though because it is generous. If you mess up, you can cover it with white, no problem. But if you go right into black and you mess up, that's gonna be a lot harder to cover up and fix. Not impossible, but it's gonna be harder. So with this purple thing, I'm gonna leave that bottom, bottom left edge purple. Bang, now it looks like they're sitting in there. I love that. This is my favorite part of doing any painting is always the details. This is always a lot of fun. And there we have a good looking snowman. Uh, I'm gonna take, since I have this black, I'm gonna do some of these a little bit around the edges here of his scarf, just so I can see some defining moments. Uh, if there's anything that you didn't like, like say you went a little too far on your branches out here in the sky, well, what's really cool is you can take the black and just go around your branches or your scarf here. Oh yeah, I, for, I almost forgot that we had a little, he had little frillies there at the end. Um, and you can clean your painting up too if you have any sloppy edges, at least on the black part anyway. So I'm definitely gonna do that with the branches here in just a minute. I just wanna separate the scarf. You do that around the branches. Now this is just a highlight, and this is just extra points for any of you intermediate or advanced out there. You can just trim that down. Now that brush, whatever branch or sloppiness I did with the brown and yellow, that is completely covered up and gone. Right there, that yellow top, gone, boom. So black can be a great cleanup tool if you use it correctly. It could also be your worst nightmare with some of this stuff, so. All right, you know, I think it's missing some snow. So let me show you some simple things about snow. I'm gonna make sure my brush is wet. Just take that detail brush and I'm gonna do little dots everywhere. If you do add a little bit of water or mix some water into your pure white there or have some water on your brush, these will come off much easier and look much cleaner. And the harder you pr press, the obviously the bigger the snowflake it is that you're gonna get. And the lighter you press, the smaller. So I like to change up how hard I push this too. If I just do little tiny dots, and maybe I'll do some big dots. Now this is snow, it's not stars. So it is gonna fill out the whole background, but we're also gonna do some up front too, in front of the tree, in front of the snowman, down on the ground. Because if I only keep it to the black area, then it's just gonna look like stars. So if that's what you want, cool, that's up to you. And there we have it. You can also, you know, do some highlights down there at the bottom on your snow, since we're working with white anyway, or do more highlights with the tree, wherever you see white highlights fit. But outside of that, we are basically done. So feel free to take the rest of this time to work on some details and do all of your finishing touches, and then I will see you at the end.
a masterfully crafted painting in roughly an hour that you can hang up in your home for the holidays and be, enjoy, be proud of yourself. Hey, if you haven't done so yet, please like, subscribe, comment below, just smash those buttons for me. But we wanna thank you here at the Esther James channel for checking us out today. Hopefully you check out some more and I can't wait to see you again. So whether you are watching from the comfort of your bed or you actually painted along with me on this one, thanks again and we will see you next time.